economic globalization was heralded a decade ago as a rising tide that will raise all boats for the poor and vulnerable in the third world it has been more like a tsunami sweeping away the little security they had in any case the rising tide metaphor is hardly positive in times of global warming and sea level rise while the eco- impacts of economic globalization are different in different societies and on different sections of society it is the vulnerable who are paying the highest price in the case of indian farmers they are paying with their very lives however it is the very in transformation of society by the rule of greed that globalization has unleashed which poses a pervasive threat to our very ability to be decent human beings living at peace with diversity let us first understand what is economic globalization it is a complex and controversial issue the process of increased integration and cooperation of different national economies is called globalization it involves national economies become increasingly interrelated and integrated it involves free trade greater movement of labor increased capital flows the growth of multinational companies increased integration and global trade cycles increased communication and improved transport effectively reducing barriers between countries but the cost of globalization is very heavy on the developing countries free trade harms developing economies developing countries often struggle to compete with developed countries therefore it is argued free trade benefits developed countries more one problem of globalization is that it has increased the use of non renewable resources it has also contributed to increased pollution and global warming firms can also outsource production to where environmental standards are less strict globalization enables workers to move more freely therefore some countries find it difficult to hold on to their best skilled workers who are attracted by higher wages elsewhere globalization has led to increased economic and cultural hegemony with globalization there arguably less cultural diversity economists will reel off the benefits of trade between countries capital flow and labor flow anthropologists and social scientists will explain a lot of inequalities the rich on a global scale have got richer and the poor not a lot has happened there social science will detail how developed countries have profited off the poor even via ad agencies and finance institutions such as the world bank international monetary fund and world trade organization who are supposed to be acting in developing countries best interests globalization and farmer suicides two aspects of the food and agrarian crisis in india are the epidemic of farmer suicides and increase in hunger malnutrition has increased among women 
and children. Results of the National Family Health Survey show that anemia has gone up for women and children. Among the lowest 30% households, per capita calorie intake has fallen from 1830 kilocalories in 1989 to 1600 kilocalories in 1998. In 1999 to 2000, almost 77% of the rural population consumed less than the poverty line calorie requirement of 2400 calories. Farmers' suicides and increase in malnutrition are related processes, both are the result of 10 years of rapid and unthinking trade liberalization. Indian farmers are facing a crisis of their extinction caused by their suicides. The country has several obligations towards its farmers, both nationally and internationally. However, the pressures of globalization combined with the influence of bodies like the World Trade Organization and International Monetary Fund has managed to defeat these obligations. As globalization transforms food production and distribution, new forms of malnutrition are emerging, geoparadizing the health of billions of people. This shift is causing a rise in undernutrition, hidden hunger, and people who are overweight. In fact, more than half of all children in the world are suffering from hidden hunger, which is when they don't get enough essential vitamins and minerals. An estimated one in three children, meanwhile, are not growing to their full potential because of undernutrition, which is when children don't get enough nutrients and childhood obesity is rising in every country in the world. Malnourishment in children under the age of five can lead to stunting, a phenomena that impairs physical and cognitive development. Globalization has led to increase in costs of production, falling prices of farm produce, rising costs of food as a result of dismantling of the PDS system and weakening of the Essential Commodity Act. Globalization Thus, has led to increase in costs and the of poor production, pays more. falling prices of farm produce, and rising costs rise. of food. These As structural changes of the, are part of the, trade of the public package, distribution system, which consisted of the following the elements. of the Essential Commodities Liberalization, Act, liberalizing the choice of fertilizers both farmers import, and consumers, and deregulating as global corporations increase the their control of over fertilizers. food and agriculture removing land sealing regulations these corporations removing subsidies by low on irrigation prices electricity and people and credit and creating conditions rising costs to facilitate commodities. the trading of canal irrigation water rights deregulating the wheat rice sugarcane cotton and edible oil and oil seed industries dismantling the food security system, removing controls on markets, traders and processors and subsidies to cooperatives, abolishing the Essential Commodities Act, abolishing the general ban on future trading, abolishing inventory controls, abolishing selective credit controls on inventory financing, treating farmers' cooperatives on an equal footing with the private sector. Agriculture is the mother of any economy, whether it is rich or poor. 
much of its influence is on the other sectors of economy industry and service india is the second largest in farm output hence india's economic security continues to be predicated upon the agriculture sector and the situation is not likely to change in the near future even today the share of agriculture in employment is about 49% of the population as against around 75% at the time of independence there is also an unprecedented degradation of land and underground groundwater resources and also fall in the rate of growth of total factor productivity natural resource sorry natural resource based of base of agriculture which provides for sustainable production is shrinking and degrading and is adversely affecting production capacity of the ecosystem but multinational companies are attacking on india's rural areas in some states lands are handed over to the multinational companies because of liberation liberalization these companies produce cash crops and so that the problem of food is likely to occur in the near future developed countries are using dumping techniques to keep their superior superiority in global market developed countries are selling their agricultural goods on cheaper prices than the competitor and less than its total production cost it is causing side effects on the developing countries developing countries have restriction on their agricultural products like import duties and quota there is no limitation on the grants given by developed countries to the farmers so developed countries sell on very low prices it affects on the agriculture sector and the farmers of developing countries there is a need to examine each of the causes which have led to the current crisis in agricultural sector and analyze the role that liberalization policies have played the national sample survey organization report 2005 indicates that one in two farm households are in debt and only 10% of the debt was incurred for non production purposes also 32.7% of the farmers still depend on money lenders the experience with liberalization is critical for the indian farmer who is already paralyzed by low productivity and lack of post harvest storage facilities has resulted in heavy loss of produce and revenue the domestic farmer could not stand the comp- competitiveness of international market which has resulted in migration of labor from agriculture to other industrial activities according to nobel prize winning economist joseph stiglitz trade agreements now forbid most subsidies expected for agricultural goods today's international trading regime is unfair to developing countries he also pointed out that the average european cow gets a subsidy subsidy of 2 dollars a day the world bank measures measure of poverty more than half of the people in the developing world live on less than that it appears that it is better to be a cow in europe than to be a poor person in a developing country in india 60% of the population depends on agriculture this pressure on agriculture is increasing day by day because of the increasing population because of marginal land holding the production cost of indian farmers is higher as well as the cost the as well as the quality and standardization of agro produce is much neglected along with this the curtailment in subsidies and grants has weakened the cultural agricultural sector with this background the farmers are not in a position to compete international market immediately after globalization indian rupee devaluated by 25% 
and Indian crops became very cheap and attractive in the global market, which led Indian farmers to export and encourage, encourage them to shift from growing a mixture of traditional crops to export-oriented cash crops like chili, cotton, and tobacco. The need for more inputs of pesticides, fertilizers, and water than the traditional crops require automatically increased fertilizer and pesticides prices by 300%. Pre-liberalization, subsidized electricity policy helped farmers to keep the costs of production low. The electricity costs increased dramatically when farmers turned to the cultivation of cash crops, which needed more water, hence more water pumps were needed and there was higher consumption of electricity. The fact that only 39% of India's cultivable land is irrigated makes cultivation of cash crops largely unviable, but export-oriented liberalization policies and seed companies looking for profits continue to push farmers to the wall. As per reforms of World Trade Organization, Indian government removed import tariffs and duties. Earlier, these were working as a cushion to protect and encourage domestic producers. By 2001, India completely removed restrictions on imports of almost 1,500 items, including food. As a result, cheap imports flooded the market, pushing prices of crops like cotton and pepper down. As a result, most of the farmers committing suicides in Maharashtra were concentrated in the cotton belt till 2003. In 1951, agriculture provided employment to 72% of the population and contributed 59% of the gross, gross domestic product. However, by 2001, the population depending on agriculture came to 58% whereas the share of agriculture in the gross domestic product went down drastically to 24% and further to 22% in 2006 and 7. This has resulted in, a lower, in lowering the per capita income of the farmers and increasing the rural indebtedness.